Welcome to a software demonstration brought to you by QPSMR Limited, suppliers of the QPSMR software suite for market research and analysis. Creating a CATI questionnaire. This is the first of four videos designed for those who are interested in using QPSMR for telephone interviewing. In this demonstration, we will use the QPSMR companion software to modify an existing questionnaire about coffee, originally designed as a paper survey. We will add a new hold filter with carry forward text, randomised responses and also randomised a set of questions, include an interviewer text, a verbatim question and CATI triple Z entries copied from a skeleton QDF file downloaded from our website. These CATI features will make the telephone interview run smoothly and ensure the data collected is as clean as possible. The first modification we will make to the questionnaire is to add two new integer questions positioned after the existing question Q3, where do you normally drink coffee? We will ask what percentage of the coffee you drink is consumed at home and what percentage is consumed outside of your home. These new questions should only be seen if the respondent drinks coffee both at home, Q3 is a 1, and outside of home, Q3 is 2 to 5. So we will create and apply a new filter to ensure that is the case. So after existing entry Q3, we insert a new question named Q3A and select the type integer whole number. We then type the question text, what percentage of the coffee you drink is consumed at home? And replace the width of zero with a three because three digits would be required to store the maximum response number 100%. Next, we use the settings tab to insert a minimum of one and a maximum of 100, so only responses between 1 and 100% may be entered, then close. The next step is to insert a new filter, which we will name FQ3AB. In the definition box, we type Q3 forward slash 1, identifying those who drink coffee at home followed by the word and as both parts of the filter must be true followed by q3 forward slash 2 dot dot 5 identifying those who drink coffee outside of their home in the text box we highlight the text shown and overtype all who drink coffee at home and outside home As our filter is now complete, we close. Now to apply the filter, we will drag it from the main window and drop it on our question. To do this, we double click Q3A and select the filters tab, leaving the window open. We then use our mouse to click the filter once and holding down our left mouse button, we simply drag the filter onto Q3A. As our second new entry is almost identical to Q3A, we will use the menu selection New Duplicate This Entry to create a copy of Q3A, automatically renamed Q3B. All we need to do then is to change the text to be What percentage of the coffee you drink is consumed outside of your home? then close. The next steps are to add together the percentage responses by defining a new integer variable and to create a hold filter which will pause the interview if the total percentage is not 100. Within the filter text we will include instructions for the interviewer and carry forward text to show the percentage answers previously given. To define the variable highlight Q3B so the new variable will be positioned after it and insert a new variable using the toolbar icon. We will name the variable vint and select the type integer 
whole number. In the definition box, we type Q3A plus Q3B and change the text to add total percent. As both Q3A and B are filtered, we will need to apply the same filter to our new variable by dragging and dropping it from the main window, then close. Now we will create the hold filter to pause the interview if the respondent drinks coffee at home and outside of their home and the total percentage does not equal 100. To do this, we insert a new filter using the toolbar icon, type the name F hold and tick the hold input if true checkbox. In the definition box, we type FQ3 AB forward slash one and V int forward slash N100. Next, we will enter the text. Open square bracket Q3A close square bracket percent at home plus open square bracket Q3B close square bracket percent outside home equals open square bracket V int close square bracket percent. Please can I check your answers? Using this text with carry forward markers, square brackets, surrounding Q3A, Q3B and Vint, the answers given by the respondent will automatically be shown in the hold filter text message on screen during the interview. As the hold filter is now complete, we will close and save our work. Before moving on, we will quickly test the hold filter. To do this, all we need to do is to highlight the entry F hold by clicking it once and select answers selected entries test. We then click copy input then OK and add record. Notice the first entry automatically displayed is Q3 so we can make our selection. Remember we must choose at home response 1 and at least one other location, a response between two and five to see the new entries. We will select one and two, then press enter to continue. Next at Q3A, we will enter 50 and at Q3B, we will incorrectly enter 51. This will mean that the hold filter is displayed with these percentages shown within the text, along with a total 101. If we select back to last question and change the answer to be 50, the total is then 100, so the input end window is shown and we can close. Next in our CATI survey, we will randomise the responses to Q6, which brands of coffee do you drink at home, so that the brands do not always appear in numerical order. To do this, we use the Settings tab to click Randomise Responses. Next, we will fix the position of the other and don't know responses so they always appear at the end of the list. From the Responses tab, holding down the Control key, we select both responses, then click the Input button. Some settings from the paper survey are already applied, so we just click Fix Position and Close. And then close the entry. Now let's look at randomising a set of questions. We will add three new questions positioned after Q7B, which ask respondents to rate the cat, the man and the jug from the advert. We will randomise these new questions so they appear in random order and include some text before them for the interviewer to read out. To make the three new questions and the interviewer text entry, we will use the new duplicate this entry feature. This means that the required filter applied to the entry we duplicate will automatically be applied to the new entries. 
So firstly, we double click the existing entry Q7B and select New, Duplicate this entry. The program will make an exact copy of Q7B, naming it Q7C. We will then amend the text to read, How would you rate the cat? From Q7C, we again select New, Duplicate this entry to make Q7D. We repeat this process from Q7D to make Q7E and from Q7E to make another duplicate which we name Q7TXT as this entry will become text for the interviewer to read out. Now to update the new entries we click the up arrow twice to move up to new question Q7D and amend the text to how would you rate the man. Click the down arrow and update the text for Q7E to how would you rate the jug. Finally, click the down arrow and update the text for Q7TXT to the next questions all refer to the TV advert you said you have seen. And change the Entry type to be none, text for interviewer, then close. Finally, we highlight entry Q7TXT by clicking it once and then click the Move Entries Up the List toolbar icon four times to move the Q7TXT up the entry sequence order so it is positioned immediately before existing entry Q7B. We are now ready to randomise the entries Q7, C, D and E. Firstly, we highlight them by clicking each entry once while holding down the control key. Then select Edit Randomise Questions. We type the random group name RQ7 and tick Make a new set for every selected question, then close. Notice the blue random group marker surrounding the new entries, meaning they will be displayed during an interview in random order. Next, we will include some interviewer instructions, which will appear, appear on screen under the question text during an interview. We will include a simple instruction on the existing question, which collects the sex of respondents. To do this, we double click the entry to update it and in the instructions box type do not read out. We will add a coloured background by clicking the colour button, choosing yellow and selecting OK. As our entry is now updated, we close. Now we will include a verbatim entry to collect open text during our interview. To enable large amounts of text to be accommodated, the responses to verbatim text entries are stored in a separate CSV file. If required, these verbatim texts can be coded and handed back into the main data file for analysis. For this demonstration, we will simply double click to update the existing comments question, changing it from a multi-coded question to a verbatim entry. Those of you familiar with processing paper surveys with QPSMR will know that the default data entry setting is to allow questions to be skipped. The default setting for CATI is not to allow this. However, sometimes during an interview, it is appropriate to leave a question unanswered. So we allow this entry to be left blank in case the respondent does not wish to make a comment. To do this, using the settings tab, we click blank allowed, then close and save. Finally, we will add the triple Z quality control entries that enable QPSMR to automatically collect important information about our project. This includes the status of the sample, the number of calls made and the call outcomes, as well as interview, appointment and interviewer details. Skeleton QDF files which contain all the triple Z quality control entries that we recommend you include in your surveys are available to download from our website. 
Detailed information about all Triple Z entries can be found in the on-screen help files within the software. We have already downloaded the QPSMR Skeleton CATI with sample QDF file and we will use it now to copy the Triple Z entries and paste them into our questionnaire. Leaving the coffee QDF file open, we switch tasks and open the skeleton. Using our mouse holding down the shift key, we highlight the first entry and scroll down to entry triple T start Q. The marker denoting questionnaire starts here. And using our right mouse button to copy. Switching back to the coffee QDF, we highlight the first entry in the list Q1 and use our right mouse button to paste before. Next, we switch back to the skeleton QDF and highlight entries triple T, end Q, through to the last entry V status and use our right mouse button to copy, then close the skeleton QDF. Switching back to our coffee QDF, we highlight the last question comments, then click the right mouse button and paste the remaining triple Z entries at the end of the project and then save. For your own CATI projects, you may wish to update the intro entry, which automatically picks up the time of day to include appropriate introductory text explaining where your interviewers are calling from, the purpose of the survey and so on. You may also wish to update the text in the start entry to include participant consent. Also, the call result responses in entries triple Z SR0 to 9 can be modified and or added to if you wish. However, the first response in these entries must always be interview proceeded. We hope you have found the information in this demonstration useful. Our CATI questionnaire is now ready for sample management and quota control modifications. This is covered in the QPSMR telephone interviewing series video number two. For more information about the products and services available from QPSMR Limited, please visit our website www.qpsmr.ltd.uk.